I'll pull up our slides and, and we'll get started. <clears throat> all right. All right. Okay. Hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, but the topic for today's webinar is obviously focusing on the knee and the knee technique. So the title of this webinar is called Foundations of Strength Testing Knee Techniques. Okay. Now, before we get started, we wanted to make some introductions. So um, for those who weren't with us last time, I'll briefly introduce myself. My name is uh, Daniel Stewart. I'm a physical therapist based out of Salt Lake City, um, have uh, been practicing here for a few years. And um, a little bit about me, uh, when I graduated PT school, um, one of the things that I was struggling with with a lot of my patients is to how to make uh, strength testing or at least make their ex strength exercises uh, be more objective, to give my patients more information on how to or why they're doing their exercises and to track their progress. So as I'm sure most of you have experienced, you have patients who come in that are injured or after surgery, and it's very easy for pain or a loss of range of motion to be a motivator. But once you get that patient that is out of pain and have reached their um, range of motion goals, I was having a hard time getting them to continue to come throughout their course of therapy. And so I realized that manual muscle testing really didn't mean anything to my patients, really didn't mean anything to insurance companies. It was more of just something that was taught in school as a way to try to put a number to strength tests. And so uh, I decided and found this company called Active Body, who is producing a product that was used in the isometric rehab space and uh, worked with them over the last couple of years to develop a product um, that uh, now is, is sold worldwide to many PT, uh, many PT practices across the country. And our mission uh, is to try to change the profession, elevate the profession in a way that moves us away from subjective measurements into more objective measurements. And what I found is as we use this device, our patients get more excited about their exercises, right? They understand better why they're performing their exercises. And we've experienced an increase in retention uh, throughout a medically necessary plan of care. And so if you're on this webinar, you probably have already had a device. You've probably experienced this, but um, hopefully my, my story resonates a little bit with you. Now, Kevin is, is very special to Active Body because uh, the reason why, why we're probably in the handheld dynamometer space now is because uh, Kevin, at one point in our history, uh, brought up that we basically had a handheld dynamometer in, in our product that we had. And um, because of that, we've really explored getting this play in this space. And Kevin's been a real... Um, a real uh, great supporter of ours over the years. So Kevin is a uh, is a professor for Belmont University and has used the product in his courses for a number of years. I think I think you mentioned five years last uh, on on uh, Friday, and so um, that's his his kind of uh, relationship with us. And I'll pass it over to him to finish his introduction. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, yes, as Daniel mentioned, I've uh, been teaching. Uh, in, at Belmont here since since 1998, and my areas are biomechanics and, and orthopedics. And I was excited when we found uh, John Tate at a uh, combined section meeting that was being held in Chicago. Uh, and we found this and we realized that what uh, Active Force had built was actually a very uh, clinically applicable dynamometer. And this has really changed the way that I've uh, use this in the, as far as in the clinic and, and as well as with research. And Active Force has, has been willing to, to further develop their product as far as in the way that the data is displayed. And I'm excited because we'll get to uh, discuss some of that today with you looking at uh, rate of force production and looking actually at the curves uh, that you can see. And it, it really helps you to delineate how, how patients uh, are using that force. Uh, many of us, if we were using dynamometers in the past, we looked at either just peak or average over the time. Uh, but I think you'll see uh, once we get into to the displays of the of the data, there's a lot more to it than that. We've been implementing it in our PT curriculum now for just over five years, and we're not just implementing it in our uh, kinesiology course, which is in our program where we teach 
uh, manual muscle testing and, and strength assessment, but we're also incorporating it in our orthopedics courses, as well as our adult neuro courses and showing, uh, getting the students to understand the carryover through, uh, throughout their, their practice, uh, regardless of what area they, they, they end up practicing in, whether it be orthopedics or adult neuro. And the feedback uh, that we have seen from them taking on their clinicals has just been overwhelming. So I am, I am just very encouraged to see just, just how this will, will move our profession forward. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to get into uh, kind of the structure of what we expect the kind of the next webinars to go through. Um, and again, a lot of it will um, happen uh, in conjunction with uh, PhysioU, right? So um, to if for those of you who weren't uh, at our um, webinar on Friday or PhysioU's webinar on Friday, we wanted to announce that we formed a, a kind of business relationship with a company called PhysioU, which uh, PhysioU is a company who creates videos and education tools for students and and uh, and for phys practicing physical therapists to basically try to digitize all of your textbooks that we had in school that most of us don't use anymore into a platform that allows you to condense it in a way that's usable for practice. And so I've very benefited from um, using and having a subscription to PhysioU over the years because it uh, basically applies best practices and clinical excellence and gives me information that allows me to um, use it on a daily basis with my patients. So we've now partnered up with them and they've created videos using our content. And so if you're anxious or, or um, anxious to learn more or want to have videos of every test position um, and how that's performed, um, you can head over to PhysioU and, and be able to see a lot of those videos that, that they've created for us. So wanted to talk about that because later we'll show you some videos from their platform. So <clears throat> one of the things that we wanted to test on today or talk about today is why, sh why should we measure quad strength? Right. And so one of the key studies that I wanted to highlight is whenever we're treating um, ACL rehab patients, which is something that I think almost all of us have experienced in our careers, is that in order to be practicing at a level that is appropriate or with what research shows, is we should really be following some guidelines when we're anticipating somebody return to sport. And uh, so we brought a, um, I have a couple, or I have a study that talks about um, the validity and the reliability of using handheld dynamometers. But before I get into that, I wanted to talk specifically about ACL rehab, right? So there's really three or four tests that you should be doing before you allow a patient to return to sport after an ACL repair. And what those three or four categories are, right, is their muscle strength, which is the one that we want to talk about today, right? A common criteria is the assessment of quadriceps and hamstring muscle strength. There is often, uh, this is often measured as a percentage of the strength of the uninjured leg with a common threshold being at least 90% of the strength of the contralateral leg, right? And so when you think about being able to really feel the difference between one leg and the other, right? Most of the time, the quadriceps is going to be something that's too powerful for you to test with just your hands. But on the other side, right, how easy is it going to be with manual muscle testing to be able to tell a 10% difference in two very powerful, or I guess one very powerful muscle, which is the quadriceps, which obviously, you know, makes up four muscles. But how, how likely are you to actually be able to sense a difference of 10% of or less, right? I think we can all agree the whole reason why we're here is that we don't feel like we can, right? Number two is hop tests, right? So you're all familiar with the single leg hop, the triple hop, the, cross, the crossover triple hop, right? This also should be performed, and the goal is typically for an uninjured limb to perform within 10% of the, of the injured limb, 10% uh, above. Um, and then obviously uh, running tests, so doing agility and performance tests, um, you know, obviously working them up to full level or full strength of whatever sport they're playing, right, is also another key test that you should be doing when trying to assess readiness to return to sport. And then finally, I'm sure a lot of you know of the, of the mental tests you should be doing to make sure that they fully trust their knee and their ACL when, when returning. 